Kareem, uh, former High Commissioner to uh, India of Bangladesh, uh, a very successful tenure of five years during which uh, the land boundary agreement, historic land boundary agreement between India and Bangladesh was uh, clinched and uh, signed. Uh, someone who is an old friend of India and uh, even Indians regard him as uh, their friend uh, in the diplomatic community as well as in the civil society. Uh, thank you very much for your time uh, in Dhaka. Uh, it's a time when uh, the 50 years of in Bangladesh's independence is being celebrated. Uh, what is it uh, that you can look back uh, on these 50 years and say Bangladesh and India have done well together and what, what is the status of the relationship you think we are currently in? Well, first of all, Nitin, welcome and taking the trouble to come and see me. Uh, uh, yes, uh, I am a friend uh, of, of South Asia. I'm a friend of Bangladesh-India relations being better or Bangladesh-India relations also carrying the rest of South Asia along. Um, where are we 50 years from now? It is not just the 50 years of our independence. It's also the 50 years of establishment of formal relations between two sovereign independent countries. Absolutely. <clears throat> I think, and of course, our relations are hallowed by the mingled blood of the martyrs on the soil. Uh, our relationship during the time of the founding father of the nation, Bangabandhu, whose birth uh, centenary we are celebrating also this year. Uh, I think the guidelines were all set by him. His vision was there that still continues to guide us in terms of national development policies, in terms of uh, policies towards neighbors, in terms of regional outlook, and in, indeed in terms of how our relations should be with the globe. You know, his cardinal principle was friendship to all, malice to none. He picked up this phrase from Lincoln and adapted it for our suit. And I think today our relationship is in a, what I would call a, a, a critically sweet spot. I say critical because... Very well described, yes. Okay, it is because, you know, uh, relationships... We started off with a big bang, there was a lot of euphoria, there was a lot of hugging and embracing and reaching out. But then our relations have gone up and down, up and down. It only stabilized, I think, during when, when Sheikh Hasina first came in in 96. She tried that, but there were coalition governments on both sides. We achieved the Ganges, uh, historic Ganges Water Treaty 30 year. Uh, we also signed the um, the, the uh, stoppage of insurgency, the anti-insurgency uh, agreement uh, from both sides. Those were, I think, landmark in the sense that they paved the way. Both of these were holding up everything. It was like uh, uh, a log jam in a river flowing. True. Okay. Well, because when I joined as additional foreign secretary in 95, I saw that one issue, the Ganges, and the other issue on the Indian side, the concern of, of the insurgents, yes. was holding everything. Absolutely. She had the boldness and the vision to say, we need to solve this. And we need to solve it. It has to be pragmatic. It has to give both sides the feeling that they have got something out of it and then move on. Basically, that's what it is. I think in the second term when she came in, because she was not able to achieve a lot of things. They were both, you know, coalition governments in India, coalition government here. Absolutely. They had to hunker in, you know, after about two years or so. But in the second term when she came with a man massive landslide, it was overwhelming. Oh, you know, and all sections from all, people from all sections of society. Specific mandate was improving relations with neighbors. A, and of course, getting rid of uh, you know, militancy and other things. Absolutely. These were all built in, and that is yes. what gave her the strength to go forward. Because otherwise, you know, uh, all societies have divisions. There are political right. divisions in every society. Sure. Uh, democracy is usually always uh, a work in progress. Okay? So, I think from the ups and downs, we came to a point where it, it, it settled. It settled, and then we started looking, ch chalking our way forward 
you know, marking the, the map, the road map. Yeah, building I think the structure. The, she laid the road map in 2010 January with her visit. So I always tell people that look at three or four documents that you basically, essentially three, uh, the first joint communique uh, signed in 2010. It was a very, very detailed joint communique. Normally joint communiques or statements are not like that. Exactly. Okay. Then there was the joint communique when Dr. Manwar Singh came here in uh, 2011. 2011. Along with the joint communique, I think the most remarkable document in South Asian or post-independent South Asian history is the Framework Agreement for Cooperation and Development. That's true. This is again September 2011. That was September, September 2011. Correct. 6 September 2011. I was also on that you trip. You were there. <laughs> exactly. Okay. That is when a number of good things were announced. India lifted, you know... all the negative list it removed them from the uh, uh, banned items etc and uh, it's another matter we have not been able to capitalize on everything exactly but you know between intention and operationalization there are it's is not an easy path always and uh, especially you know, in indian subcontinent context yeah uh, <laughs> because you know this was the most integrated region in the world exactly until the 13th of august 1947 exactly. on the 14th of august it became the least integrated region correct if you look at the history of other regions and you make a comparison people say why is sark lagging behind because we made ourselves enemies to each other in other regions they were enemies they had I mean, in, in European Union, Germany and France and exactly. the they others, they the were all world war. <laughs> visceral. Exactly. Since the First World War, Second World War, wars before that, yes. they killed hundreds of thousands of people in each other's exactly. country. Okay? But they decided that no, enough is enough. And it was not someone or some people deciding it or some group deciding it or some elite deciding it. European cosmopolitan was there since the 19th century. But... It was the people saying, enough, no more. And that translated to the polit- politicians. And of course, where did they start? They started first with rebuilding. So, you know, the two treaties were basically designed to uh, recover or, or re-energize an industrial revolution, the fruits of which had been lost. Exactly. Okay. Yes. The European Coal and Steel Community yeah, Agreement right. and the Eurata. Absolutely. Energy is the driving force beca- behind any development. Exactly. We didn't do that. In yes. South Asia, there was... It took was, a long time, actually. It, well, I mean, we are still, still, we are, we still, we are still struggling. <laughs> yes. Because the centrifugal forces triggered off by the narratives, unfortunate narratives in the, I would say, the early 30s and later on, which sort of started crescendoing, led to our looking at each other as enemies. We forget that we have not centuries, we have millennia of history which... says we lived as a family. Right. Yes, within a family you have squabbles, you love, you hate, you fight, you make peace. Correct. But we coexisted largely peacefully. Sure. Okay. Mm. That history we trashed. Exactly. Which I think we did it at our own expense. And that is why we And that is back. why all of us, yes. individually we, right. and collectively, we have paid a heavy price. We have. We have the largest number of poor people anywhere in the, in, in the, the concentration anywhere in the globe. Right. But we also have individual uh, examples of shining success. Enterprise. Enterprise. Mm-hmm. Entrepreneurship. If Bangladesh is where it was. I mean, maybe in 72, 73, mm-hmm. as a, a, I'm not an economist, but as a political economist, mm-hmm. I would say you can't survive. Yes. Okay. As a basket was, case. We, 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 to... yeah, we, <laughs> we inherited a wasteland which we created. Right. right. Now to rebuild that without resources, without friends, without, uh, you know, uh, natural resources, except our manpower and our water resources and our, and our forestry, we had nothing else. So I think we have come a long way. We are now, people look at us as a, as a model of development. How did we transform? It's the entrepreneurship and vigor of a young nation. That's one. I think uh, why, I mean, you, you, people wonder why hasn't Sark succeeded? Exactly. I was just okay. coming to that. Yeah. That Sark uh, is not working. So what else? What is the alternative? Well, I think the, the leaders in Sark realized that you need to work together to be able to get somewhere. Okay. But... 
The politics kept intervening. Uh, that narrative which was generated in the early 30s clouded their minds and the judgment. And that, unfortunately, in some parts, it still continues to cloud the judgment. In some parts, there is a revival. Uh, uh, and, and that, uh, in a sense, it, it also reflects the global divisions that are there now. Uh, globalization is there, which, which basically says you embrace everyone. But then you have the counter-globalization now, which says, I, me, inward and looking, ourselves alone. Inward looking. Inward looking. Mm. So these are two contesting forces now, and where they will go, I don't know. Right. For us, we have to eschew anything which says, I, me, and ourselves only. We have to, we will, I've said only in a, a webinar yesterday, that we will either sink or swim together. Exactly. Our development, we have to develop together. We, uh, our destinies are intertwined inseparably. Correct. You know, uh, just as India cannot cut us out and throw us into the Bay of Bengal, we cannot cut ourselves apart and just go you know, swim out into the Bay of Bengal. Absolutely. So we have to learn to live with each other. Okay, we don't love each other. If we don't love each other, you must still learn how to live with each other and do that in amicability. You can't change geography in any you case. You can't change geography. You can't choose your neighbors. Yes. And our, I mean, this, we have a very bright future ahead if we know how to get our act together. Right. So from here on, uh, now that uh, we have done 50 years, ups and downs, as you mentioned, but a kind of stability is there in the relationship. Here on, what needs to be done to do this? You've said uh, we should stay together, work together. But what are the areas that one should look at working together? Prime Minister Modi's government, which first enunciated that waterways is the most exactly. efficient, mo the cheapest, and the most environmental friendly form of communication True. And, and transportation, transportation yes. particularly bulk transportation. Exactly. Between Assam and Bengal or yeah. even uh, Assam so and So we lost and that. Yes. Now, the British colonial powers mm. were using it to extraction for their own benefit. Right. They Tee would take coal, the raw materials, yes. everything, take it, you know, to, to Scotland or wherever. Absolutely. Uh, convert it, send, send, send it back, the finished and, and sell it to us. Back here. Yeah, exactly. They used the same route. Now, they built a series of coastal ports. Right. Karachi, Mumbai, yes. Chennai, Vishakapatnam, mm. Kolkata, yes. etc. This Chittagong. line of coming, Chittagong, it stretched up to Singapore. That Correct. is where their hub was, yes. main hub. Absolutely. Now, people talk of Indo Pacific today. This Indo Pacific existed during the time of the British, it existed long before the British came. Exactly. Because ports along Bengal, along, well, uh, Kolkata, Naranjan, Chittagong, and uh, uh, along Sitwe, right. the Arakan coast. Correct. They were frequented by travelers from Europe, from Persian Gulf, from Arab, uh, Arabia, from everywhere. Exactly. They settled. They set up ports and staging posts and settled there. They intermarried there. That is, that is what the population grew like. Exactly. We cut ourselves, cut off our arms and legs Both and sides, everything. Yes. We just didn't cut off our heads, That's right. which still continues to, you know, work malevolently sometimes, <laughs> then, then malevolently. <laughs> so yeah. that's, that's where I see. We first restore this integrated ecological and economic uh, 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 map that we used to live in. Right. Okay, we are separate sovereign independent Doesn't states. Matter, but for but, trade and connectivity. But for trade, mm. cultural connectivity. You see, connectivity is not just for trade. It's a flow of culture, ideas, exactly. it's a flow of culture, Absolutely. it's a flow of exchange of so many things. And we restore that. When you restore that, the people themselves will crave for more. Exactly. Now, one of the biggest tools that uh, governments have used is to prevent people from making right. each other. There's no movement, yeah. no free movement. Uh, the river economy, yes. actually, this is the most heavily densely populated region in, in, in the subcontinent, right? Right. The river economy, the, the main mode of transportation before the railways came was the river in this yeah, part. exactly. People along the banks, the villages along the banks on both sides next to each other were connected to each right. other. They were flourishing upstream and downstream industries that, that promoted this growth. Correct. Then we 
We partition the land, but we partition the, the waters, we partition the... And the system. Uh, eco, the, system the system, the ecosphere, the forestry. Right. And the ecology, the ecosystem follows its own natural laws. Exactly. We are subject to their laws. They are not, not subject, subject to our to us, laws. Yes. That is what we forget. So you've taken this Bay of Bengal initiative, as I can see. Uh, tell us a little more about that. You see, uh, I have been a constant champion of looking at my region and the world in a larger, in a macro picture. South Asia will progress if South Asia gets its act together. But South Asia is still a truncated part of what had existed before, what I call the, you know, people call it the new world order emerging after 45. I call it the post-colonial new Westphalian disorder that emerged. Because suddenly you had mushrooming states, and I point out even to European friends that, look, Westphalia in 1648 defined how nation states should be and respect each other's. But it took 200 years for the European states to, come to, 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 to consolidate yeah. their new skin that they had. Correct. You know, you shed your own skin, right. but the new skin, you were still not comfortable. Develop, yeah. We are only 70, 70 years, years down. These are imported institutions for us. We coexisted somehow. You, you can do a study on that, why we coexisted, but we did. Now, we have to regain that sense of the larger us around us. Now, as I see it sitting in Bangladesh, we are at the apex of the Bay of Bengal. All the rivers, the two major eastern Himalayan rivers, it drains. drains they have no other way of going but through us. They have to come into... They yeah. do us a lot of good. They right. also do us a lot of damage. Right. So we have to learn to live with these rivers. We have to learn to manage. Bay of Bengal, fisheries resources, yes. But there are many other resources. We are still not able to tap more than 10% of the, uh, you know, our, our zone that is allotted to us under Easy, international yes. law. Okay, and, and that is because of lack of capacity. But the Bay of Bengal also has a growing dangers which are, which are creeping, uh, like creeping annexation upon us. We have a dead zone of 60,000 square kilometers in the Bay of Bengal. Did you know that? No, what is that? Even here, we did not know. That's an area where oxygen depletion has taken place due to various, so anything living organism that swims in there, oh. Dies. Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, there are such areas in the Pacific and Indian Oceans. Mm -hmm. This was discovered by accident by a group of scientists who were probably, who came here to see, they were studying maybe other dead zones to see whether there are similar phenomena in the Indian Ocean. And you know, where they found it? In the Bay of Bengal. They didn't find it in the Arabian Sea, mm -hmm. they didn't find it elsewhere. Now, that should make you wonder why. Yeah. Is it because, you know, Two, two and a half billion tons of silt flows down right. from the mountains through these rivers. And it's not just our rivers, because there are rivers from China. South India draining, mm. the rivers from uh, Myanmar draining, sure. which also come from the Himalayas. Yes. What is it they're bringing down? Or is it man-made activities? Uh, uh, or is it something from the seabed uh, that is happening? We need to study that. Number two, why is that sway? If you look at the map, I could if I... Yeah. It's perilously close to the Bangladesh coastal area, mm -hmm. the West Bengal coastal area, a little bit to the Orissa coastal area, mm -hmm. not too far away from Myanmar. Oh. It's further away from Myanmar. Right. It, it's closer to us, yes. but not too far. It's in north, northwest. I see. It's, okay. it's, 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 it's the, like a blob. Yeah, okay. It's like a blob. blob okay. Right. Or is it coming from downstream? We don't know. Mm. Okay. So we need to study that because right. we are all talking of reaping two, three trillion dollars of uh, uh, worth of uh, uh, resource, uh, yeah, of, of money yeah. from the blue economy of the Bay of Bengal, right. that might disappear. You said, what can we do? Right. We can address many of these things which we touched but then did not follow up on. Mm. Okay. Uh, had se seven operative clauses. Mm -hmm. One was tigers. Okay. Tigers was the easiest. Uh, counting them, you know, tracking them, uh, uh, making sure that, you know, poaching is uh, reduced, etc. There were six others that relate to the ecology of the Sundarbans. The forestry, the fisheries, and, and the, you know, the preservation of the ecosystem. Right. Nothing has been done. So each has been doing what it feels is best in his side. Right. But 
you cannot, you know, you human circulatory system each supplements and complements the others. Right. You have to do it the same with these ecosystems. Correct. And because we have to come and work together, we have stayed away. So for a decade, not much has happened. Nothing has happened. No, not much is an understatement. Okay. Nothing has happened. Nothing has happened. So I am involved in one project now trying to see how we can identify. Excellent. I understand, I understand that, yes, you can identify 10 priorities. But even when I was doing India-Bangladesh relations, we had 10, 12 priorities. But I said, you have to sequence the priorities. Yes. Like in an exam hall, you have, you have to answer 12 questions within two hours. And you spend the, most of the time trying to solve the most difficult you will not have time to finish all the other questions. Yeah. Whereas if you do, do eight questions which are easier, right. then at least you have the pass marks and more. <laughs> okay? Exactly. So we, we have to, from whatever we identify, we'll say, okay, we can do two or three that are pragmatic, practical, and doable. Sure. Uh, we know the politics is always difficult. Yeah, but and and we have made the politics more complex than it needed to be. However, even within politics, you, we have to learn how to skirt carefully, avoiding the mines that are laid out in the minefield. We have to do some planning that if I step on that, that's going to blow me up. I avoid that, I do something else. Exactly. Okay. I think it's a great advice uh, because there's so many uh, pending things uh, between India and Bangladesh and great. for the region. Yeah, the mm. thing that can become toxic, mm. it is already infested with some toxicity is mm. the issue of the waters. Right. I mentioned that you cannot partition the comets. No. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what has sustained us mm. has been these comets. What has given us our wealth mm. has been these comets. Uh, now, I have said rather uh, provocatively to mm -hmm. many Indian friends, mm -hmm that if your framers of the Constitution were somehow to reappear and be resurrected today, they'd probably look back over the sweep of what has happened and what has not happened mm -hmm. and revise the Constitution. So well, it's a provocative statement to make to an Indian <laughs> sitting in Delhi. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So I said he would probably, the first thing he would do is, he would shed the partition syndrome. Okay, mm -hmm. we divide the land. Right. I don't divide the water. Water will be a federal subject. Mm -hmm. The reason you have not, I, and I, I will say it publicly yes. on camera, please, you have not been able to address your Kaveri and Godavari and other issues right. is because of this. Exactly. The states think it is my water, yes. I will not give it to anyone that else. Is also water on doesn't water. belong to anybody. Water, we belong to water. Right. And unless we change this attitude, this is not going to happen. And so therefore, Tista is not... Uh, no, well, it's, Tista is just one. Yes. We have 52 50, yeah, rivers. Exactly. Okay, and, and Sheikh Hasina realized that in her, in her, you know, that was the vision uh, which encouraged me to try and push for things. Right. That these rivers are, uh, uh, you know, the, you cannot hold them at the borders. Right. You have drawn the political map, but yes. the river will keep flowing. Yeah, of course. More than 60% of the river waters flow into the sea. Exactly. We have to learn how to manage it. How to harness until, it. Mm. Until 47, that's what we did. Every village managed his part of the river. Right. So, you know, the dredging was done by the river companies, the steamship companies who plied the steamships from Guwahati to Dhaka, Tarangans, Kolkata onwards. Yes. The Brahmaputra and Ganges were always dredged continuously. Correct. Okay. We stopped dredging after and 65. Now we are facing the consequences. No. So, so now it has become a mammoth task because every year two and a half billion tons of silt comes. It deposits, then we, there have been intermittent natural uh, uh, causes like disturbances, like earthquakes. With earthquakes, your riverbed and everything shifts. So it's, you know, our rivers co change course. You have to maintain a certain navigable challenge, sure. uh, a channel yeah. around the earth. Sure. That was what was done. So now when you talk about basin management, people say, oh, I can't, you know, my mind cannot grasp this idea. But that's not so. So, however, now at least both sides, both countries, at least we uh, and India are the two countries most involved in this. Mm -hmm. You have discovered the virtues of uh, inland water transport. Right. And, and Prime Minister Modi has been promoting this along with his minister, Nitin Mr. Gadkari. Gadkari. Yes. Uh, 
that we will have national waterways, not yeah. just national highways. Yes. I think that was the right approach, approach. to take. Mm -hmm. Sheikh Hasina is also uh, uh, embarked on regaining the rivers. I still remember her first speech after she was sworn in, in, in uh, uh, um, when was it, uh, 20, 20, 2009, 20, uh, uh, yes. January 29, after yes. the elections in 28. Correct. I want my rivers back. And when I heard that, I, you know, I, I was sitting somewhere, I, I don't know, I was at the BI at, as vice president there. I leapt up. I said, this is the leadership that right. we want. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, it has been tough yes. because, you know, you, you develop vested interests internally and externally and, and they will oppose anything that cuts into their uh, bread and butter. Right. But she has been steadfast mm -hmm. in that. And now the World Bank yeah. is also come in. It's uh, helping us meet where the rivers meet. Exactly. The last mile connectivity on both sides. Right. Because we stop attending the rivers when the river reaches the political border on the map. Yeah. But there's no border on the river. Okay. So it has to be so both sides together. It has to be this. both sides. I have, in fact, I advocated that make your country programs work on these same rivers in a manner that they will... Yeah. Make the last mile connectivity and actually, uh, you know, enhance this connectivity. So we have to figure out easing the visa system. Right. We have to figure out how we allow people and to meet each other, get to know each other, because we have had this opaque curtain between us, which defines the other. Right. Somebody is telling, whispering in your ear, yeah. you, you have a ogre sitting over there. Yeah. He'll eat you up and whatever. Right. And if you can't see the other, you can't converse with him. Mm. That's what you will always think. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think that that's a great overview. So in the Bay of yes. Bengal, yes. Indonesia and Malaysia are also part of the Bay of Bengal. Exactly. I was just coming, going to come to ah. that. That why not do more cooperation with uh, Indonesia? Yeah. So I'm thinking of Bimstek Plus. Bimstek yes. is just halfway to that point. Right. Okay. Right. It has four countries from BBIN yes. or SARC. Yeah. And, and three countries from ASEAN. It's been described as SARC minus Pakistan in it, some quarters. Yeah. But, so, so, but anyways, yeah. I mean, if you, uh, uh, I'm still not writing off that. Right. Maybe things will change. Yes. You know, people change over time. Maybe right. they will. Yes. Uh, so you keep but, that hope alive, yeah, but, but you do, plus you focus mm. on what you can do. Right. Okay. Mm. Uh, maybe SARC will at once point come and say, okay, we also want to join up. Sure. But let them come on their own accord. Right. Uh, but this is, I plus. think, hmm. doable. Yeah. Uh, the the idea is is half there, not fully, uh, because they have their own association. We have 1.78 or 1.8 billion people in this core area of of uh, what I call the Bay of Bengal yes. area. Yes. And then there are countries of interest like the landlocked countries, uh, Bhutan and Nepal, yeah. and the adjacent countries. Uh, you know, Cambodia, Vietnam, Laos. Singapore, Laos, all of them. Now, even if you leave those out, we have close to 1.7, 1.8 billion people. We have a huge economy amongst ourselves, but these are truncated economies. Exactly. They're not integrated at all. Yeah. You integrate them, and then you try and visualize what this region could be. So I'm already making a, a mental leap can we think of ourselves as a Bay of Bengal economic community? It's an excellent idea. Okay. I mean, that is how the European economic uh, yeah, community developed yes. and then went into European community and then into European Union. Yes. It has to be organic. You can't force anything. No. But if you develop mutuality of interest, mm. it will come. And it will come from the people. Yes. So that's a great, uh, you know, next... A phase of so food. that is that is what India and Bangladesh, Bangladesh can do. See, India has the gravitas. Yes. Bangladesh has established reputation of punching above its weight Absolutely. in in promoting regionalism. Yes, we have done it. We did it with SARC. We yes. did it with BBI and Bimstek. Right. Now I'm saying, go beyond. Bay we can't Bay go Bay. west. Go east. You know, if you can't go in one direction, you have to find. You want to keep going. That's what your That's nature is. You go east. Absolutely. That's a great thought. And I think on that note, I must thank you for your time and these insights. Because somebody who's worked uh, across the spectrum, 
will only have these ideas and i uh, wish you uh, good luck uh, for these initiatives on bay of bengal i'm sure we'll have more occasions to talk uh, further but thank you very much for your time thank you very much nitin it's thank been you. great thank to be talking to you thank you